But the set between these two, we're going to check out the drafts and see how everything looks. Map draft, we will have Bacon with Mott and Bailey Hestia chooses Battlegrounds, and then the band out all of the other maps, and we end up on Nomad Hubs, which is quite interesting. And then for the Civilization draft, which we, I did get a little message part of uh, their draft system. We'll talk about it in a second. Bacon has selected Saracens, Tatars, Malians, Vietnamese, and Teuton, while Hestia selects Mongols, Gujars, Portuguese, Japanese, and Magyars. Uh, the ban for Bacon was Berbers. The ban for Spanish for for Hestia was Spanish. And interestingly, we had an issue. Um, Hestia apparently hasn't used this program before and did not know how the snipe system worked. It did snipe randomly. However, the players agreed that Vietnamese would actually be the snipe. So Vietnamese are disallowed here. Um, I don't know how this all works out exactly, but they're not allowed and Saracens are. I guess the players just went about their merry way then and played the set. So we're going to just uh, go along our merry way, merry way and cast the set as if that were the case. But then, thank you for joining me. I hope you guys are enjoying the bracket thus far. Game number one here. Big Tasty Bacon is going to be in the orange. And we'll play with the Malians here. His town center will be promptly placed here on a mineral node. And, well, where's Hestia going? Oh, players are right on top of each other. Another nomad start where the players are definitely going to have a rough go here. And honestly, Big Tasty Bacon is probably uh, at the worst of this. I don't know. It's very hard to say, but quite awkward. Still getting some bills in here, getting some, uh, some of these geese on the way in which is quite nice but obviously this is uh not the most ideal start for either player i imagine however the mongol player hestia will have better hunt food in come so i would assume he'll be happy about that but there's gonna be a villager very close to this town center when it goes up it's not quite town centers will be up Really, about the exact same time. Big Tasty takes that boar right away. I think he has to. I think he honestly should send a bill and check for hunt, too. He needs to try to remove food from being a possible situation here. Hestia, though, will get the boar in. And... No, uh, I think the range is like literally like one tile out from each. We we might see some garrison. These berries aren't going to be takeable for Hestia for long, I don't believe. I mean, I would be paying attention to that, especially if that. Li yeah, and see, Hestia will lose a vill. Yeah, so town centers I think are like one tile apart. Uh, but uh, it, literally one tile. Maybe two. It's a bit awkward. These might actually range each other with. Fletching. <laughs> gonna be interesting. Obviously, uh, this is the old school no man way. We don't have peace treaties here. Uh, personally, I disagree with the whole peace treaty thing. I don't like it. I think it it takes away from the uh, RNG of no man, and I think uh, it's not ideal, right? Not ideal. A oh, good question from Jabari. Yeah. Did you guys play today? I think you guys were playing today. Maybe you are about to play. Either way. We'll get the games in. Alright. So, with a very close start here, and Mongols losing a vill early, it is a bit awkward. Oh, Gio, that's a shame, man. It's a shame. Uh, but I did give additional time, and if he's not able to show up, I mean, we're already... We are already at extra days, so I, mean, I would prefer games to be played, but we're already past the deadline for that, <laughs> so 
Probably will end up having to be an admin win. Only 10 hours late. Why didn't you say something earlier? Good God, Gio. Yeah, uh, well, it's likely that Gio will advance. Alright, alright. Uh, I'll give you give you another uh, few hours here, but it's still extremely unfortunate. Um, but hey, it is, it's the way things go. Life has uh, things happen left and right, right? So it is what it is. But we'll see how things progress. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Well, we'll see. I guess we'll see what happens. <laughs> Keep me updated, man. We know. Let me know. Uh, food count for both of these guys are quite good. Uh, but they're both gonna be going up soon, pretty soon. Um, the garrison could hit some of these vills again potentially. Losing that vill has been interesting because there's not a lot of idle TC time. And somehow Hestia is still ahead of Vil. So I'm guessing no Loom and Loom. Yep. So that's the uh, discrepancy there. But all things considered, Loom will still need to come in for Hestia. So Big Tasty Bacon is technically going to be at the same pop, I think. It's a very awkward start here, obviously. Very awkward start indeed. But we'll have to wait and see how things go. Obviously, it's going to be a interesting show here. No man TC was probably a fast move. No, not really. They were up like almost identically. It, it, it's just been a very interesting start. It's just Loom, I think. And now there's some idle time behind that, of course. Neither player has picked up yet. Loom is now coming in here for Big Tasty Bacon, or for Hestia, and Big Tasty Bacon doesn't have the food under his TC pick up just yet. So the Mongo player will be up faster on the back of a lot of the hunt here. The barracks will already be up, however. We have no building yet for Hestia. He does have the wood for it. He needs to get that situation started. We do have Big Tasty Bacon headed out to the gold. And uh, no gold here for the Mongo player. Likely just going into outs, I would imagine. The gold is going to be takeable here for Estia, though. It's uh, always interesting to see how this will shake out. The old school nomad. Like I said, personally, I actually like that we don't have the uh, peace treaty on it. I'm not a big fan of the peace treaty. Personally, I think it's kind of uh, annoying. <laughs> I actually like it better with this situation, to be honest. So we'll have to wait and see how this all plays out. Feudal Age times will be very similar. Uh, big Tasty, though, he's going to be on the gold. And he's going to actually move over some more hunt. Feudal Age hits the barracks is up. We'll see the stable coming in next. Interestingly, I think we're going to see archers from a Malian player. And maybe some defensive spears here as well. Really hard to say. Uptime's really close. And, uh, yeah. It's going to be fun to see what happens here. Things are going to get ugly. Mixing it up here. Where's the slumber camp? Oh, down here. I, I saw that earlier, I swear. <laughs> These trees have tons of wood on them. 250 per. So uh, they're these two vills. These two vills are literally about to cut down their like cut their first tree up, which is always lovely. Ooh, a double investment here. Okay. So far, Hestia has a ton of food though. And honestly, he could be going up for a castle age play. Do you have a spearman out? Spearman not gonna do so much damage. Blacksmith going to be kind of... No, actually, he's actually got a low HP vill. This could actually be a vill kill here. Estia's not, not paying attention here. Because he's uh, reacting to a gold miner, I think. Vill goes down. Where are the gold miners that are under attack here? Oh, right here. 
so he was reacting to that. Whoa, sorry about the glitch there. Whoa, -ho -ho. that's quite a little leg spike. Uh, we do have Castle Age coming in here for Estia. All of that hunt is doing a lot of good. I actually think that it's going to be a very difficult thing for Big Tasty to come back for this. Yeah, he's definitely this close. I guess he figures he can just uh, move around here and be fine. It's super risky, right? He's on stone, so likely going to see a castle at some point. Uh, Big Tasty is getting his upgrades, though. So it's a little awkward. But I think Hestia will probably just castle drop his opponent here. Alright, I take it back. <laughs> He's building towers that home for defense. Archers won't be able to find much damage. Nice getting this one vill under here, but it's super low HP. And oh, so many things are dying. Honestly, he can just fight this with the villager. He'll be fine with that. So the FC will go up, and actually, he's only three vills behind, so it's not even that bad. Castle Age is going to be in. We don't have enough for a castle. We do have a defensive. Tower on the stone, but a tower coming up here for big and tasty. One thing I didn't pull up were the player's elos. This is the round of 32. Let me pull these guys up now. I think they were fairly close uh, seed-wise. I think it was like 14 and 18 or something to that effect. But the Step Lancer comes out, and yeah, that's going to be a uh, quick game one. A very quick game, number one, actually. My, oh my. Alright, so game one goes to Hestia here. Big Tasty Bacon. Probably just uh, calling it because he knows he's too far behind at this point. Mongols getting up that fast, having the much more superior units. Quite problematic. And we'll go to the draft here. So, we have a Malian defeat, a Mongol victory. The home map for Bacon is Mont and Bailey, so we'll head to Mont and Bailey. Lots of saves here. Obviously, we don't know what we're going to see. Uh, just for the, an update on the ELOs, Big Tasty Bacon is currently sitting at 1550 ELO. All-time high was at 1601. And Hestia is sitting at uh, 1518, and he's peaked at... 1571. So, both players up there. Obviously, not bad elos there at all. <laughs> You're up too late. Yeah, fair enough. You actually, but this is actually two guys, you know. Ah, fair enough, fair enough. Well, a quick game number one for sure here. I'm going to load into game number two. Which, uh, again, will be the home map of Big and Tasty Bacon. Big and Tasty Bacon. And Mont Bailey. Yep, monkey profile pick. Must be a fan. Yeah, that was game one. Game one was super quick, Otter. Super quick. Mont Bailey, though, game number two here. Hestia will be here with the Gujaras. Save that I think is quite good on this map. Obviously, getting these extra berry bushes is nice, but also being able to garrison the sheep early and having the hunt available. And, you know, next to a meal, not so bad. Not so bad. On the other side, though, big and tasty. Bacon here with the Tootin. Obviously, players are prepared for this map, as it sees, as it seems, because they have uh, not built their houses, which is quite nice. But, obviously... This will be an interesting situation. Big and Tasty needs a victory to advance here uh, to the game number three. Hestia looking to close this out. 
and he's on to the lumber camp, gets the boar in under the town center. Gujar is just a great sieve for this map overall. Tootin, obviously, our fine sieve as well, but I feel like the sieve here for Hestia is going to be quite, quite good on this map. I'm kind of worried about what the Tootins could do. We'll have to see. Obviously, they have their options. They have their good things. And they could do and be just fine. But I, I would definitely favor Gujaras if I had to pick one myself. Hestia is... Uh, again, he's picked a nice sieve here. I, I don't know what to say. I think Gujaras are just favored in here. I think that there are a lot of bands that we should see that we haven't seen, and I really think that Mongols being banned, as well as uh, Gujaras, if Mon Paley is a map, is actually quite, quite advisable. Yeah, you don't need any farms, really, um, early on. You definitely don't. Let's we'll see how things progress, though, here, obviously. It'll be interesting. To bring in the boar. He's got some foragers on the bushes here. He's going for the hunt. He has all eight of those sheep garrisoned already. Nicely holding up for the gate. And he should be just fine to get this boar in. No problem as long as he doesn't kill the town center. He's got it planned and timed out just fine. And let's wait and see how this one shakes out. Obviously, Big and Tasty Bacon needs a win. Let's wait and uh, see what happens. Yeah, Otter, I agree. I think the Gujars, they have a lot of options. There's enough gold on this map as well that they can really do good things here. We'll have to wait and see how this all shakes out. We will see Big and Tasty going for that early barracks. So we're we going to see an all-in play here. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. Let's wait and see what happens, obviously. But, population-wise, even. A little more idle TC time for Hestia. No loom here for either player yet. That barracks, so though, he's not hiding it. He's not hiding it at all. We have seen a few all-in militia plays. Mapping problems here. Uh, a bit awkward. Uh, let's say he's headed out for the hunt, however. And we'll, we'll see a early barracks for Hestia as well. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Let's see. We haven't seen the barracks. So I guess they're just preemptively uh, building those to advance to the next age. Big and Tasty will push the hunt a little closer to the mill, which I think we've seen a lot of. Gold already being taken by Big and Tasty. I'm very confused what Big and Tasty's strategy is here. Very confused. Hestia preparing for some aggression, though. He's going to wall this up. He's going to block things up a bit. Interesting play. And finishing the uh, forage bushes underneath there. Going out for another mill. Hestia has so much food. He'll have another bill pop, he'll go loom, he'll be up to the next age. Everything here is going to be pretty interesting to see how this all shakes out here. Hestia has so much food, though. So much food. Moving out to the mill, he's onto those berries. He has six on wood, even. Uh, Jabari will go cast at some point, I'm sure, but... For the best of threes, if Hitch wants to jump in, I usually am good with that. Obviously, he's made the maps. He has his opinions on the maps and everything. But I don't generally have co-casters for the best of threes. I think mostly because it's easier and quicker for me to just run through the wrecks a little bit faster by myself. I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll have some co-casters. Knight said he would co-cast some games as well at some point. Yeah, Jabari, he might not even be paying attention right now. He could be practicing some games. I don't know. Jabari's uh, waiting for his opponent set to play. Uh, there's been some, some flight issues for the opponent of Geo, I guess. And they're just waiting to play those games. 
Ah, yeah. No, no complaints there. I agree. We will have the Manatomes. Click and three. Alicia already headed forward with villagers that are holding a little bit of food. Maybe towers. Interesting. Otter, you said you know these players. Do you know if they've practiced together? Because this is uh, some interesting plays. Blacksmith Fable. Upgrade. So this is going to be very all-in against another SC play here, it looks like. Uh, that camel will do some things. What's up, superhero? Welcome, welcome. Interesting situation here. Interesting situation here. Archery range for the Tootin' Archers, folks. Apparently that's what we're going for as well. Very all in against uh, Hestia, who's about to click to the Castle Age. Uh, I'm not sure why he hasn't yet, to be honest. This is it. Can we take enough gold? This is, uh, there's some gold over here for Hestia. They're both really close. Yep. Interesting. Archery range, some more walls will come down here. Those villagers are still here. Not gonna stop the archery range. The man at arms are here. It's not at all, and there's no more man at arms behind this, so I feel like he wants to just go full archers here. Oh man, I don't know if this is gonna happen though. Forward blacksmith strategies. Still will run. Still will potentially die, but there's no eco upgrades here. Castle Age will be in, and I, I think Big and Tasty might be dead. He's, he's gotta do a lot of damage here, and he only has a minute to do it. There's a stable. I'm guessing it'll be Shavash Rider will pop out. Now, uh, the, the preemptive wall has really paid off. Villagers are here as well. I'm gonna actually save this villager. Yeah, but he's not really... He's moving to this gold. I don't have a forward market strategy. I mean, the food will be under threat here. There'll be a camel. Oh, sorry, the camel... He already has a camel. It's earlier situations. The villagers are going to be uh, fighting down this military. It will be archers. I guess. That archer's gone down very quickly, though. <laughs> Vil goes down. I mean, Hestia could be in trouble here. He's in Castle Age. He's yet to produce in the Castle Age, though. A few Vils have gone down. Uh, he's just going to run in under the town center, I guess. Another Vill... No, he will survive. Oh no, big and tasty. Oh no. Oh, the man-at-arms are dead. Alright, one man-at-arms survived, one archer survived. Oh no. There's a lot of military just going down there. And the Shavash Rider kills one of the four Vills. Actually, it looks like it's killed both. It did kill both. What does he do now? What does he have behind this? He's got a few spears, a few archers. Got some farming eco. It's not there yet, though. Hmm. How does Spearman do against Simvosh? Not bad. They have no upgrades, obviously. But he'll just have archers come out. And economically, Big and Tasty is ahead slightly, obviously. He's behind a full age, though. The Shimvash are headed forward. Some archers are coming down here. And he could defend this with some spearmen. Those archers. And he could try to do some damage here. He really has painted himself into a very awkward position, though. Uh, the spearmen and the archers combined, combined here will be just fine for the time being. And he tasty. He's farming over here. In the mail. Have good farm numbers. Defensive barracks. No worries, no worries. Another town center coming up here. 
All right, well, I mean, interesting, interesting start to this game here. I don't know it's, if he gets on to... Oh, the Ellie Archers are coming out for Gujaras. That will be kind of problematic if he gets the numbers up. Especially with Shimvash. Uh, this is quite an expensive unit. I think he should have just added in some regular archers. No worries, Otter. Thanks for stopping by me. This is all visible. It's just very awkward. I don't. I really don't know how to call this one right now. It's very awkward. Big and tasty. Looks like he's gonna get next age. Looks like he's gonna just retreat back. I think this is probably a fine decision. But he's down now. Three TCs to the one. He's gotta get to Catholic, which he did have to sell his soul for wood and stone just for the gold by the food and now he is up so how many bills will he have is the question there's not solid production the food eco has fallen off here it's gonna be up to 10 farms obviously we still have the uh, passive income from the cheap but that obviously is not as effective as time goes on the blacksmith will need rebuilt Taking a few skirms, I really heavily don't know if skirm is going to be the right answer. But I think like skirm is going to be the cheapest option for him, so why not? But, again, minimal upgrades here. No eco upgrades for Hestia. He's still three bills behind at the moment. I don't know, it's very interesting. They are going to head forward now, though. He left the market. That's the idea. Just gonna kill archery range. Stable blacksmith being built behind this. Militarily, it is 25 military to nine, and eco is the same right now. So it's not as as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Military just really hasn't done what I expected it to do, and this military really it, it really can't fight this well. Got 13 pikes, nine archers, three spearmen. And obviously he can get some upgrades here. I think yeah, Pikeman, Botkin, and Crossbow, all all these upgrades are coming in. So he's actually going to be just fine. Siege Workshop even. He just needs to uh, keep his military where he needs to keep it. Keep this out. This could do damage though. That is the problem. These vills, nowhere to hide. The farming vills, nowhere to hide. We'll head back. It's 46 bills to 40 now. The pikemen will head after this here. These five Shimbosh we have to be very cautious of. He sees the LE archers are going back. The housing walls will commence here. Bunks would be fine too, but these are going to try to break in. The pikemen will chase. I think he needs to just repair this. This is really all he has to do. I don't know, I don't understand the stable. He made the stable very early. I guess he wants to try to add knights. These Shimbosh are probably not going to be able to escape this, as they will literally just be trapped here and die. I mean, honestly, it's really not that bad. Skirm is going to die to this wolf. Or is it? Crossbow's going to save him. Not quite. The economy behind this is better for Hestia, though. The wolf needs killed. There we go. Interesting situation. He's adding knights now. I really just don't know what Big and Tasty wants to go for. Honestly, he's already invested into crossbow. He's already invested into archers. He's already got upgrades for those. I think you just continue down that route, and I think... That would be your best position, but what are you going to be able to do here? You can't sit back. I agree with Super here. We need some siege that's forward. We need some aggression here. I just don't see it. He's on to stone now. He's getting the armor upgrade for the knights. A couple knights would be good to raid, sure, but... I think he's already 
at a position where maybe he just continues with a cheaper composition here and tries to get the bills behind it. I don't know. It's full Ellie Archer play, it looks like, behind this, though. Not gonna break it, and uh, I think he needs to, need to find a gate. You prefer monks? Yeah, I think monks would be great, but I mean, they're, once these Gujar uh, elephant archers get up there. Alright, so, so the siege is gonna come from back here. Okay. So it will be siege. There's a second town center coming up. No third town center. I don't know about all this from Big and Tasty. I still. I'm not convinced here. He does have good military numbers, but I'm not convinced. If he can get a boom going behind this, maybe snag relics behind this, I'll be a little bit happier with his position. It's just taking so long to get front, and you're leaving your siege unprotected here. I feel like he just needs to change up the angle and try to break in. He sees the elephant archers are here. Like, why not just, uh, you know, go elsewhere? Attack elsewhere. I don't know. Not a huge fan of this situation at the moment. Uh, but, as I said, he does have the siege. There's defensive siege being purchased. There are monks being purchased behind this. Eco upgrades are starting to come in for Hestia. He has a lot of ills behind, that is for sure. Yeah, this, there's going to be a castle here now. Bunnyville's behind. Better military numbers by far. But will he be able to break in and do damage is the question. The knights need to be up here and running in now. Pikeman and the mangonel not going to be able to stop this. And again, he's just keeping him out. Just keeping him out. Nope, this is the 1700 bracket. Uh, both these players are like low to mid 16 or 1500 and they've both peaked around the uh 1600 1620 area superhero so it's it's a bit interesting um it's just not going so great here for big days big and tasty hesse is uh the higher seed yes the higher elo yes and he's just Looking very comfortable to sit back and boom this up. Uh, specifically, Big and Tasty's 1550 ELO peaked at 1601, and Hestia's at 1518 right now and peaked at 1571. So, it's around a 32 matchup, though. So, they're, they're obviously, uh, being matched up, these guys are pretty close in the seeding. I think, well, if we look at the bracket later, it's like seed 14 versus seed 18 or something. Disc throwers coming. Yeah, the chakrams could come in. I don't even think he's going to go chakrams, though. What are going to chakrams do that these elephant archers can't right now? Ego upgrades are coming in galore. Hesse is preparing to click up to the Imperial Age. Looks like Big and Tasty is going to be doing the same, but he is lacking the eco here. A little farther behind. One, even, one bills at this point. He's done a good job. He will add the fourth town center behind this, so I do like that. Again, his military is just stagnantly sitting here. Like, what are we using it for? Relics, Big and Tasty does have one relic in. So he's going for relics, but Imp is on its way. Interesting situation here. There'll be more archery ranges. Yeah, so we're just going to see Ellie archers. That is what Hesse is committing to here, and I mean, all in all things considered, be fine. Imp is going to be coming in for Big and Tasty, though. The one thing that I would actually love to see from Big and Tasty is Onager. I think that the Gujars struggle against Onager. Uh, I think they struggle against Halb Siege, honestly. At least from what I can tell. I have not played them a whole lot, or played against them a ton. But I, from what I've seen, like the disc throwers have low HP. Onagers would do great to kill the HP off of the elephant archers. The, the I mean, there's no, there's nothing on the field right now. Do you delete those? Do you delete those? Okay. Big tasty elites. 
We have arrow coming in. A very nice forward castle on this minute little hill here, but that's still beneficial. We'll take less damage from Krebs. And he can push from this position. Bombard towers, yeah. I mean, bombard cannons, yeah. That's, that's always a problem, right? But, you know, I I, I don't know. Uh, I forget what this tech is for. Uh, it's cheaper food cost than bills, or cheap, not bills, um, military. I mean, it's not even food. Cheaper military altogether. I think it's food. Isn't it like 40% or 30% or something? I think it's actually a really good upgrade. The Shaterius. The Shaterius. Um, so I don't know why I bother. <laughs> Never gonna be able to pronounce that. Bloodlines. Forging. So he wants to go into the night line still, it looks like. Imperial Age is in for Hestia, and does he see the castle? He does not. I guess he's just preparing for the push. It will be Ellie Archers, though, with Bracer. Not elite Ellie Archers, though. He's floating enough gold he could definitely grab that. He will go for a Hersary. Really? Interesting. Interesting. The pikemen are kind of being produced. Good pike numbers. Crossbows, obviously. Or, or heresy. It's heresy. Oh god, I can't talk. I can't talk to save my life. <laughs> and this is set number one of potentially three today. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. I have three sets games loaded and everything, but so yeah, it's like a thousand gold, isn't it, for heresy? If I'm thinking of the right tech, heresy is where if conversions come in, the unit dies instead of being converted towards the enemy. He's gonna pull forward with a treb. It will be seen. Oh, oh maybe it wasn't seen. Conscription. Crossbows head north. What's happening? Why can't I get it to go away? There we go. Relic is going to be brought in over here. Lots and lots of elephant arches. Lots of food. Is this for Vils? Did you get it? Interesting time to buy food. Castle number two. Treb numbers will be three before you start happening here. Yeah, Knight, it's a very strange game. Uh, elephant archers. Heresies in as well. So, a bit awkward. A bit awkward. A third Treb, and then I think you go. I think you uh, go, go. A lot of elephantos, though. We see another castle here at some point. Um, thought about it. And being tasty just sent them back here. It's been a very uh, interesting game. It was kind of aggressive early. Hestia didn't push and didn't really like stake his advantage early. He was actually in castle age a lot sooner. Could have been better for him, but. Um, we have some mangonels here, hanging out. The Trebs, send forth thy trebuchets. He listened. Hallelujah. Shoot down the castle. Send in the halberdier. Onager's on its way. More seeds worked up. I agree, I said onager earlier. This castle will it be able to stay up? There are no upgrades on this castle. The repairs are about to begin, though. Have you chased four of them here for Hestia in the north? The castle, the elephants are charging in. Onagers 10 seconds out. The mangonels are nearby. Castle goes down. The trebs will fire on the trebs, it looks like. The halberdier numbers, just not enough of them there. He's just gonna, I think um, the onagers are going to be well needed here. Reb sniping Krebs for the time being. Where are the onagers? Send forth the onagers. Onagers still not enough. This 
castle might very well be denied here. These trebs are likely to go down. He has sniped a few of the trebs, though. Oh, those are just good treb shots there as well. The Onager numbers are getting up there. There are bombard cannons on the map, though. He's trying to repair this castle. The other three archers aren't even elite yet. Elite gets up to 280 HP, I believe. Or 250 right now. And there's just not going to be enough here. I think the big and tasty is just going to die to this. The Onager will, will be here now. The Halberdier number is just thoroughly inferior. And yeah, the GG comes in. Hestia takes set two games to none here. And it was a very strange game. A very strange game indeed. But Hestia boomed up. He was happy with his economy. I think better sim selection overall. Mongols on Nomad hubs. It's like a sub 20 minute game. And then I really think that uh, Gujaras are probably one of the best sims on this map as well. So. Interesting, interesting. We're going to update the bracket. This is a 1700 bracket set. So we are going to update the bracket real quick. If you are looking to avoid spoilers, this is your one and only warning to look away. But here we go. Uh, Big and Tasty was the higher seed there. But again, these guys are very close. Elo is very close. So Hestia... Oh, I guess it was 2-0. My apologies. Hestia takes the set here. Why Gujar is one of the best? Well... Mill still has sheep in it. You don't have to take any of the sheep immediately. You have a mill for free. You have hunt and berries near the mill. He secondarily put another mill on the other deer. Didn't have to place a single farm before clicking to the castle age, basically. And then he just went three TCs behind this. Boomed up. It's just quite a quite a strong selection. Quite a strong selection indeed. But that said. Uh, have to know the build, right? Have to know the build, have to know how to play him. Hestia will advance. He will await the winner of the R286 and Alcog. And then um, we have another set, potentially two sets. We'll see. Uh, it depends on how long these sets go. And uh, yeah, GG's. GG's indeed.